The resurrection of Jesus turns death into something like sleep. It's, it's all it is now. Then he appeared, verse 7, Paul says, to James. Now, this is so powerful because almost all scholars believe he's talking about the brother of Jesus, James, the brother of Jesus. And the reason why this is powerful and this is an argument for the historical resurrection of Jesus is James did not believe that Jesus was the Savior. None of his brothers did. I mean, they saw Jesus as a snot, snotty-nosed six-year-old. They saw him go through puberty. They were like, I'm not buying it. This is not the Savior. And we, John 7 says they did not believe in him. And not only were his brothers, you know, in a fog and just didn't believe, didn't understand him, they were hostile. They tried to restrain him. They thought Jesus was mad. But when we get to Acts, we see James right alongside Peter as the two primary leaders in the early church. How do you explain that? The only reasonable, the only plausible explanation is that Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to James. I mean, what would it take for you to believe that your brother was the son of God? Something like this, right? And that's what happened. Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared to James. And then Paul, he goes on, he says, and then he appeared to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also. Now, he's not mentioning all of the witnesses to the resurrected Christ. For example, he doesn't mention the women who were the first to see him. His focus here is the apostles. And Paul wants to communicate again that this whole tree of Christianity, it's way bigger than Paul, that there's continuity with the apostles back in Jerusalem and himself. It's why there's only three individuals mentioned in this list of witnesses, and you know who they are? 